Okay, so now in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of a couple of demonstration circuits where we look at these 1000 microfarad capacitors. They're somewhat large value capacitors for uh, regular capacitors, and uh, they're not super capacitors though. So I got uh, one here that's rated for 35 volts, and then these two that came out of the package there, they're rated for 25 volts. So they behave exactly the same. The only difference is you can charge this one to a higher voltage. We're only going to be using 5 volts anyways, so it doesn't matter for this circuit. So we have the switch here connected to the positive rail on the top. So this is like connecting this point there too, also because it's one conductive area. Down here is what's separated by the switch, and so we're going to have two circuits one on each side. Now we're going to grab a resistor. So this is a 2 kilo ohm, 2000 ohm resistor. I got it from this package, 2K. You can see the colors line up. That's one way I put these resistors away back into these packages is I can just quickly see that the uh, colors match. So we're going to put one on one side so it's connected to the same row is that pin. The other one we're going to connect to the same row as this pin. I know it's a little harder to see so I'll show you now. And uh, so this row here is all one connection. It's one node. We got uh, this resistor here. Going to do the same thing. Making sure I'm on uh, that row where that pin is. Now we're going to take the LEDs and put them a little more center but uh, the long lead the anodes going towards the positive side of the power supply this resistor kinda looks like it's a little loose so hopefully it's still making a good connection now we take this LED and again we put it towards the more positive side we want it to light up when it conducts and so now let's do the uh, single capacitor so this is 1000 microfarad capacitor that gives you an idea of how long it takes to charge to uh, each volt based on how much current you're giving it and we're not going to go into detail on that that's for another video the main takeaway is that it stores energy as you give it current and you can tell how much energy is stored and how much current you put in there by the voltage across it so now these are smaller, so I'm going to use them for the parallel circuit. Now again, these capacitors are polarized, so we want to make sure this stripe is always more negative than this side of the capacitor. And we will plug this one here, and then make sure the other one gets to that jumper there. And then this one, we're going to put right next to it. So we'll have double the capacitance right there. And so, I already made sure that these capacitors were discharged, but uh, let's move this a little more away. It's getting a little cramped there. There you go. So I already made sure they're discharged, but since I know I never put a high voltage across these, these only go up to 25 volts anyways, that one 35, but uh, we will just put this jumper on both sides of the capacitor like that. I'm doing it with one hand so it's a little tricky but uh, that short circuits it and discharges the capacitor. We do the same thing across either one of these. They're both connected to the same point so it will discharge both of them. So now we turn on the power supply and when we turn on the switch we will charge the capacitors through the resistors and through the LEDs. And there you can see that both LEDs turn on. but they're two separate circuits starting right where the resistors connect to the switch because that's all one conductive area. So you can see the single capacitor, the LED went out about uh, twice as fast as the two other ones. They're equal values and so these are both storing a charge so it's going to take twice as long to charge and twice as long to get up to the power source voltage minus the voltage drop of the LEDs. So now I'm going to short circuit 
both of them again. I gotta do them independently because they're both uh, separate circuits there. And uh, not sure. There we go. I didn't think I was touching it. But in uh, any case, now we got a discharge. We're gonna pull out this capacitor. Now we're gonna put them in series, these two. And so I can just plug it down here and then take this jumper. I gotta take this one out and put it over here. So now the current has to go through the resistor, the LED, that capacitor, and that capacitor to ground. So both of these are gonna charge. Now we have an equivalent of half of the capacitance of this one before we had twice the capacitance. So let's do the same thing. We should expect this LED now to go out twice as fast as the other one. And there you can see it uh, went down pretty quick and uh, the other one's still going. This switch is kind of wearing down and uh, so you'll see some like flickering and stuff. But in case you could see that this LED dimmed quite a bit quicker. Let's do that again. And uh, this one went a lot faster than the other one. So make sure we got a good view of both LEDs now. And we'll do it again. There you go. You can see the two in series. The LED is getting dim about twice as fast as the one over here because it cannot store as much charge. But you will, uh, when you're studying capacitors, you will often hear that while they're in series, you can have a higher voltage. So let's take that reading now. I have the meter ready to measure voltage. The uh, probe's in the right slot, the voltage slot. So we'll turn the power on now. And so they're not passing any more current. These capacitors are fully charged until we find a way to discharge them. So first I'm going to measure the voltage across this capacitor, the uh, single capacitor. And there you can see it says negative 3.45 volts because I wasn't paying attention. I put the probes on the wrong side. It's not, it doesn't hurt the meter or anything. That's no problem. It can measure current uh, voltage in either direction. So there we go. We got 3.45 volts. So that's about 5 volts minus about 1.7 in that range volts drop of the LED. Now we can uh, measure the uh, power supply voltage uh, right here. This uh, power supply can also be, you can pull this jumper, put it over there for 3.3 volts. But in case, now let's go to these two capacitors. So we'll go up here where the one capacitor connects to the LED and then down here where the other capacitor goes to ground. You can see it's the same voltage across the two of them. Now if I come up here, measure this capacitor independently, now you can see it has half of the voltage. It may not be uh, perfectly half, but uh, about half the voltage. We come down here, measure just this capacitor right there, and there again, you can see we got half the voltage across this one. That's why you can use higher voltages while they're in series. As long as we keep these balanced to where they charge evenly, these are rated at 25 volts, then we could charge the two of them in series up to 50 volts. But as we saw earlier, it's going to charge quicker because it's not storing as much uh, charge. It actually goes in half while they're in series, but the advantage of them being able to store more voltage is what is usually desired in those circuits.